Hey everybody, welcome back to the RGR Football Channel. My name is Daniel Harms, and today I am going to go through with you guys on my Trey Smith journey. I think what really happened here is a lot of things went on in the background that I didn't, one, I wasn't aware of, that I couldn't have known, and that now I have more information. I really am getting more comfortable with everything. I think that he's done a great job of improving on his own along with a lot of help that he's had. So we're going to start from the beginning and really talk through this because I know there were a lot of people who didn't agree with my evaluation on him coming out of college. And I've had conversations with offensive line people, um, other people's opinions I value, Ryan himself. We, we came to the conclusion that that was kind of how he was. And if you go back to my original evaluation of Trey Smith, I wasn't really concerned with him in pass protection. Uh, there were some issues that I think could leak over from his run blocking into his pass protection, mainly his balance. And, and that was a lot to do with his stance. He was just too, he put too much weight on the balls of his feet because he liked to attack. There's nothing wrong with being an aggressive offensive lineman, but learning to distribute that weight especially when I found out he was a bit overweight at his time in college. I believe he came in at like 360 one year. And, and so he, it took a while to get down in weight. And that doesn't help when you're trying to learn how to distribute weight properly. So for a guy his, his size, who he talked about, you know, in, in high school, he was always one of the more physical people. He just liked to dominate people at the position, which is exactly how you want to play in an era where offensive linemen have not kind of lost that way. College offenses go away from the dominant physical aspect of offensive line play. It's a lot of passing that's dominated by pass protection, but you can still play it at a physical way. And I think that that's one thing that always translated on, on Trey Smith's film. He was always the most physical guy out there. He was an incredible reader of the the defense in terms of he picked up stunts very well. He was able to identify where they were coming from. But again, when I watched him, that's what I saw. I saw a guy who has issues with his balance. He can, you know, he can be a little bit too aggressive at times, which is you can, you can get beat in the NFL doing that kind of stuff. If you're double you're using both hands and you're, you're trying to jab people with both hands, guess what it's going to do? You're going to be moved forward and they're going to move behind you, especially with these quick guys like Chris Jones and, and guys of that type of speed caliber, even Tershawn Wharton to an extent can use that to their advantage. So getting into camp, I noticed a lot of different improvement. A lot of people have been coming out, you know, talking about his, his, play and I decided that it was time to go back and look at his college film just to see if maybe I was either watching the wrong person or if I just came away with a completely different way of how he played. No, I was 100% correct and I went back and I flipped on one of his games, the first half of the game. He was on the ground five times. He was on the ground five times. Like this that that stuff was attributed to his balance. It was a weight distribution issue. It also was the way his stance was. So if you, if I, I watched the Alabama game and the first couple of series, he was on his, you know, on the ground, not to his, his necessarily his fault, but if you watch specifically with his, you know, his stance, his feet are too far behind him. He doesn't keep his feet. He didn't keep his feet underneath him, which allow you to move. He was really just relying on a lot of keeping, you know, your back foot dug in and pushing people that got people's legs caught up behind him and it forced him to trip a lot and fall into the ground. That's a, it's an issue. That's just what it is. It may not have attributed to the success or not success of a play, but that kind of physical limit, excuse me, not physical limitation, but just mental, not knowing that you need to really keep your feet under you is what attributed it to him being on the ground a lot. And it was evident from the moment I flipped the tape back on. So I second guessed myself for a little bit, but then I went back and I watched and I was, I was right for the most part. Now let's go to the draft process. This is where a lot of the behind the scenes work that was not even made aware of in the videos that he did with Jeff, Jeff Schwartz and Duke Mannyweather, who I, I got to say, I reached out to on Twitter. I tried to get him to you know, talk with, I wanted to pick his brain a little bit on what he actually worked out with him. And don't get me wrong. I absolutely love Duke. I love everything they're doing with the offensive line masterminds. I think it's a great thing. If you guys don't know what it is, please go look up 
Duke on Twitter, Duke Mannyweather, and, and look up the Offensive Line Masterminds. It's a great program. They really are taking to trying to get people more educated about offensive line play. And in the same respect, he re referenced me to YouTube videos that did not have anything to do with what I was interested in, which was a little disappointing. Somebody as esteemed as he is, does not want to help someone else understand what actually went on behind the scenes. So I was a little upset about that. Um, this kind of happens a lot on Twitter. People talk about how they want to, you know, improve the get the understanding of the game and understanding of the certain aspects. And in the same breath, they won't necessarily help people understand them. So, you know, I, I think that he's done a great job and hopefully in the future, we get to a point where I can talk with him specifically about some things and learn more about the offensive line play. Cause that's, you know, really what I want to do a lot of focusing on not just with, you know, RGR, but in the fantasy aspect and just overall understanding and be one of a point of reference. Cause I think that, you know, guys like Brandon Thorne and, and Duke and even Jeff to an extent, I don't think he's really out there. He's kind of weird. I'm just going to say that, but Mitchell Schwartz, who's going to be an incredible offensive line coach. If he wants to be, he's helped he's done a lot of actual breakdowns on his own stances on Twitter. So I think that that's kind of where I'm leaning to. I'm, it's going to take me a long time to get there, but I think understanding, you know, watching coaching clinics, I've watched Andy Hex, I've watched a, a couple others, just getting an understanding of how they look at offensive line play and really go, go about it is very important to the success of the NFL going forward. You have to be able to, to, dominate as and also be athletic and so i think that while trey smith was one of those guys that absolutely dominated got a ton of awards i don't believe that he was ready for based on his college tape to come out and start because i think that a lot of teams and specifically uh, smart defensive coordinators that have quick fast defensive linemen match him up against trey smith if he wasn't learning so let's go back to the draft process i have information from a very trusted source that not only was he working to get you know towards the combine and using the doing that video with with jeff schwartz and duke may with but duke specifically was working with him behind the scenes on his stance he has a new revamped stance which is incredibly important to his success and what he's doing right now you know i went back and i watched again that weight distribution that's what it is. He's keeping his feet under him more now. He, he's moving his feet with him. He's using it to translate power, which is how you move people in the offensive line. It's your legs. As much as he's extremely powerful up here in his upper body, his legs are what he needs to, need, needed to really transfer all that power through, especially with the double teams and getting on to the next level and, and getting through his blocks. I think that's incredibly important. I think that he's done a great job of not being you know, not being um, selfish in terms of thinking he knows everything. He's been extremely coachable to this point, and I guess he's even lost a lot of weight. I saw him at camp when I was there for the few minutes that I was there on Sunday, and he does. He looks extremely good. Like He's not even close to the weight he was at at some point. He looks very trim. He looks extremely explosive, and that's – the key for him because he tested very well athletically, which tells me one that he did lose that weight prior to testing for it at his pro day and that he's valuing that importance. There was a ton of times in his tape where I thought his, his feet looked like they were stuck in cement because something was going on with his, his brain. He wasn't able to get his feet moving the proper way. They weren't able to stay under him. I also learned from this source that the coaching at Tennessee was extremely terrible. They didn't really do much of anything to improve his technique, his form, anything. They kind of just threw him out there and said, look, go play and be the physical guy that you are. And as much as a lot of people have pointed to that and saying he would have been a first, you know, a, a day one starter, I, I really find it hard to believe that any team would have let him go that long to the sixth round, even with the blood clotting issues, which as we all know, he has said multiple times, he went on his that interview with Jeff Schwartz and, and Duke Mannyweather and said he's very confident. The doctors are very confident that they can get it. They've got it under control right now. So, again, a first day one starter kind of guy, even with some, some issues, doesn't go in the sixth round. I, I think teams were worried about what he could, what he did on tape with his, his stance, his weight distribution, and his balance issues. That's all gone right now. I think that there are still some lunging um, – 
tendencies he's he's got but right now it's all the fine tuning he's gotten with Andy Heck and he's taken a lot of the things that he's learned with his new stance his his weight distribution his feet and it really all of his legs and they've adapted it to him I think he's going to be a much better mover in general than he was in college than he ever was in college I think they're going to be able to use him much more in the screen game something I didn't think he was going to be really well suited for at the next level but everything looks different because of the losing you know having the right body type he's a huge guy and when you're huge in in some different ways when you're just big some some guys are only really good for playing defensive tackle you know I think Vince Wilfork who we all know was an incredibly great technician but he was like a bowling ball type size kind of player. They played him at, at one tech and nose, nose tackle. He was just there to stuff everything up. Still had some athletic gifts, which is incredible. I think Colin Saunders last year, a little bit at that point was starting to look a little bit heavier, but you still see those athletic glances and things that he can do play linebacker, for example. So like some of these guys are just so incredibly athletically gifted. You can't really see all of it until they get that proper, you know, body physique. And right now, Trey Smith has it. Everything that he's doing right now. Yes. I, I guess I so he still has some leaning tendencies and some jabbing tendencies that will get beat every now and then. But right now he looks entrenched as the Chiefs starting right guard. I don't believe anybody, even Kyle Long at this point, if he were to come back now and start to get camp reps in, he would not be able to unseat him because of what Trey Smith has done. So as much as I can put faith in the film, uh, sometimes you don't get all that information and everything that happened from the time that he left Tennessee getting ready for you know the pro day and for the NFL draft, it all was back there that I didn't know. And that's a lot. It's going to happen a lot. So I think that for the most part, we can assume certain things about film. And there's an example I have, like, for example, De'Ami Brown, who I was very high on coming out, was a huge deep threat in the, you know North Carolina's offense. But I did a little background information on him. And the offense, I found out that, you know, the offensive coordinator at North Carolina was the same offensive coordinator at Old Miss when they had A.J. Brown and, and D.K. Metcalf. So it's the exact same usage. And you can see that guys like A.J. Brown can do more than just go deep. Like they used Diami Brown very inefficiently in terms of what he can do overall. Great for impact on that offense, but it doesn't show you everything he can do and then that's why I dug a little deeper into his tape and I saw things that he, little tiny instances of quick, the short area quickness, things like that. But after, you know, after the season, Trey Smith lost more weight. He got coached up properly. Like all this information I didn't have prior to that. And I didn't know that it would be something I needed going into. So this whole thing is a learning process. I'm just kind of giving you guys a, you know, a peek behind the curtain of some of the investigation that I've done since, you know, training camp has started trying to figure out exactly how Trey Smith has improved incredible by leaps and bounds from his college tape to right now. Now we can take this with a grain of salt as the first preseason game is coming up for the chiefs, the chiefs. This is where we're going to see if everything is taking and if it's 100 percent accurate if it's all just camp kind of tendencies because he's able to know a little bit more about this team specifically than he does about an opponent so i'm excited about the opportunity that is presented before trey smith i think he's done an incredible job of sculpting himself being coachable which is the, one of the most important things getting into the nfl that i think people really underestimate is being a just being coachable, letting the guys who really know what they're talking about get into your game, dissect it, break it down, and bring you back information to make you better. A lot of guys aren't coachable. Tyreek Hill, one of the most coachable players I think I've ever seen in my life. You came, He came out, obviously, as a wide, as wide receiver who was playing running back. He, try, he learned a brand new position. He was just a, you know, a fast guy. Okay. But he knew one, you have to grind at the position to get better. And you don't just get better because you're a better athlete. You were coached up. You listen to people who are, are better than you that know what they're talking about. And you take everything and try to get better. We saw a couple years ago, him working with that soccer ball, trying to catch, you know, work on catching with his hands. He still has catching issues at times, but he's been working on it for years. Like, because 
People have told him exactly what he needs to do when he's listening. And Trey Smith is cut from that same cloth from right now. That's what I'm going to compare it to in terms of understanding that you're not perfect and you can get better. There are always going to be people that know more about the game than you. And right now, what I'm trying to do for you guys is show you that I don't believe I was necessarily wrong about his evaluation coming out. But I think that there were some things that I missed that I didn't know about. So I'm trying to morph this into how I evaluate players, do a little bit more investigation on the coaching staff, and really get into what they're doing to get better in the time from when college is over to now specifically. And I want to morph how I do things, how I give you guys you know more information, like I said, a peek behind the curtain as, as it is, to, to show you that I'm not only just stuck and entrenched in my views, but I can adapt to them with new information. So I hope that this was informa- informative for you guys, not only with how I evaluate things, but how we go forward in this process and how you know games constantly changing with players are constantly changing. So I think that I hope, like I said, I hope you guys learned something from this and I hope that this gives you confidence in Trey Smith as a player. If you didn't have any before, I have a ton more now. I know there's a lot of people out there that had them regardless. And so good for you for believing in Trey Smith. I 100% am a Trey Smith believer and I can't wait to see him this season. I hope you guys have a great day again, please like, sub hit that bell we're gonna have more content for you coming on the way this week seth will be back on thursday i assume smith you know it's almost here our first the chief's first preseason game is on saturday against the 49ers make sure you guys tune in we'll break everything down on the next day or the monday after have a great day thanks for watching this video from the team at rgr football Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.